Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. I'm Catherine. And I'm Rachel. I'm playing with the toy dinosaur. <laughs> Why not? Hey, speaking of that, actually, we're not speaking of dinosaurs at all, but we're going to no. be we're going to be going to the other side of the world. We're going to um, one of the newest and smallest countries in the world, actually, famous for its diving. And we're actually talking about Palau, Palau, which is located in Micronesia in the South Pacific, about 500 miles east of the Philippines. The locals actually call uh, they don't say Palau, they say Balao. So you might see that sometimes when you're when you're looking it up. But Palau is this island group, it's an archipelago, mm -hmm. um, made up of somewhere between two and three hundred islands. So it's extensive. Yeah. Um, but then, in contrast, only eight of them are inhabited. So it's a very small population, on, and, but with a lot of islands in the entire nation. It became independent in 1994, and before that it was owned by a succession of countries, originally the uh, Spanish and then the Germans and then the Japanese. And during World War II, there was actually a famous battle that took place on that island. And after World War II, the U.S. Uh, took it over as a, a trust territory and, and administered it until it became independent in 94. Uh -huh. And even today, it's interesting, um, Palau still has a relationship with the U.S. So mm -hmm. the currency is still the dollar. Right. And there are a lot of ties between those two countries. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. But Palau, as Catherine said, is all about diving. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had to name one thing, one major attraction of Palau, it would be diving. Yeah. In fact, we were reading that um, Jacques Cousteau, famous, famous diver, he loved Palau, and one particular feature of it, it's, it's this big drop-off called the Big Drop-Off, um, but he called it the world's best wall dive. Yeah, the diving is really amazing there. Um, one reason is all those uninhabited islands that they have in the area called the Rock Islands. And um, they're kind of remains of coral reefs that have been wheeled down over time. So they kind of look like mushrooms in this vast lagoon. And the waters are just amazing, beautiful marine life all around there. Another attraction you might find when you're diving in Palau is um, wrecks. Yeah. Because of this World War II history in the area, there are a lot of wrecks of Japanese um, ships, airplanes, fighter planes. So um, people love to dive there because they have such a wealth of wreckage that you can check out. Right. You have the wreckage, you have blue holes, you have walls, you know, just all kinds of things that make diving really interesting. And one place that's really famous, probably the most famous diving place in the world is Blue Corner. One of the reasons why it has such a well-known reputation is because there's a lot of strong currents around there. Mm -hmm. And so these currents attract little organisms that uh, fish feed on, and the fish attract sharks. And the sharks attract divers. And the sharks attract divers, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, you can see gray reef sharks, you can see barracudas, you can see all kinds of fish and coral there. There's about, a, they say, 1,400 types of fish in that area. Wow. Yeah, and a lot of coral, about 500 types of coral. Wow. So, yeah, pretty much everything you could want in diving is there. Some serious diversity. Serious wow. diversity, exactly. Another um, marine attraction that you're going to find in Palau are the jellyfish. Yeah. So there are these series of marine lakes that kind of dot Palau, but there are five that are particularly famous because they have these jellyfish that have basically, like, evolved separately. Mm -hmm. So they've all evolved a little bit differently. And as a result, you can swim with them. Yeah, and the reason you can is because they don't have that dreaded sting. <laughs> have you ever been stung by a jellyfish? No, I haven't. Okay, well, if you have... Is it, is it horrendous? Oh, it's a horrible. You, you run shrieking. It's, it's just, out of <laughs> just horrible. But, you know, you don't have to worry about it here. Um, you know, the, the jellyfish, um, because they mainly feed in that area on algae excretions, um, they really don't need the sting, so it's sort of, you know, almost gone. So they do, do still have it, but if you get stung by a jellyfish, it'll probably just be a, like a little tingle. Mm -hmm. You know, it won't really bother you. So that makes it really exciting for tourists because they can swim right next to a jellyfish. And all the descriptions of it and the pictures look so cool because it's like you're floating in this mm -hmm. sea of like pulsating jellyfish, and it just looks awesome. Very relaxing, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now we're going to talk about um, some of the non-diving attractions of Palau, just for just for a little bit. Yeah. Because say if you're if you're like me and Catherine, and you're not really divers, 
you know, I mean, I like the water, but I'm not a diver. So I'm, if I go, I'm going to want to sort of check out Palauan culture. The majority of Palauans are still natives. Mm-hmm. So even though there's a lot of um, international stuff going on, some remnants of that native culture still remain. Mm-hmm. One thing I think is really cool about Palau is that traditionally women played a really important role in the society. It's a matrilineal or matriarchal society traditionally. Mm-hmm. So titles and then property would pass through the mother's line. And then a huge part of the leadership uh, was influenced by women. Yeah, that's true. There was sort of like a parallel council for women um, next to the council that was run by men. And in fact, the men met in these meeting houses called bais. And um, they traditionally were, went there to uh, build canoes because, of course, you know, that's the fishing is very important to traditional Palauan culture. Right. So they did a lot of canoe building there and also practiced their weaponry skills because there was a lot of intertribal warfare going on. Right. So both happened there. And the bays, they're, they're just sort of shaped like, a, it's like a steep roof structure, kind of like a canoe on beams. Which is kind of interesting because it's a sea, it's a sea sort of related culture. So exactly. I wonder if there's any symbolism there. Yeah, there probably is, I would think. And, um, you know, they didn't put any nails in it. It was all constructed with beams and notches. Yeah, that's so interesting. It's kind of like, I think, um, maybe ancient Incan cultures and certain other cultures had the same sort of like perfectly fitted together without needing any sort of fastener. Exactly. And, you know, on the outside, they had these brightly painted carvings that sort of told the story of the past. So, you know, it it was both functional and beautiful at the same time. Right. That's cool. It's like story and symbols. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that's a, just a little snapshot of Palau. But if you want to learn more about those jellyfish that we are talking about, um, Amanda did a great little blog post on that. So you should check that out on our blog. And um, we'll also have some more information on Palau for you. So we'll see you next time on The Coolest Stuff on the Planet. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.